Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. This video is again a continuation of my series of videos about being an Airbnb host. In this video, I'm stepping back a little. I've shared with you in a much earlier video about the different platforms that you can use for home hosting and getting guests. Of course, the other option that you have is to build your own website and perhaps even in the absence of a website. You guys might be thinking, is it really worthwhile to go on these platforms? And specifically, is it worthwhile to put your home on Airbnb where you have to give 15% of your sales as their commission? In this video, this is what we'll cover. Are these fees from Airbnb even worthwhile? Let's check it out. So I've put this video in mind for you who are perhaps already having some experience of being an Airbnb host. You might have gotten a few bookings already from a handful of guests. You've kept their contact numbers and it's probably crossed your minds. Why don't I just accept direct bookings from these guests? Sure, that's quite practical and you won't even have to share any percentage with Airbnb. So you might be thinking that this might be a good strategy that maybe sometimes or even altogether accepting guests outside the Airbnb platform. While this may be a tempting strategy, and I have to admit, I've thought about this myself. Generally speaking, I keep most if not all of my bookings still through the Airbnb platform. No, this isn't a paid advertisement. I've done these Airbnb videos for free. There are actually three things that I think make Airbnb worthwhile. So the first and second of these are actually quite related. So when you put your home on Airbnb and open up your dates in your calendar, you are now ready to accept guests. Any guest can book your place. And what I find really convenient is that you no longer have to go through the guesswork of talking to the guest and saying, these dates are available, these nights are not, because your calendar should be reflective of really what's open, what has been booked, and maybe keeping some dates for yourself where you choose not to host guests. So having your calendar there and dynamically being able to take in bookings I find this very convenient. Your calendar only gets blocked when Airbnb accepts a payment already from a guest. So once you get an accepted booking, this is pretty much confirmed. You're pretty much set to accept that guest and the income from that upcoming guest. So yes, I've looked into it. Sometimes there are guests who want to book directly, but it's just so much trouble. The hard part really in getting guests will be the payment side and this is number two. It's quite tricky when a person inquires with you, you go a little back and forth, sometimes there is some haggling involved. Even when a guest confirms and says, okay, I'll be depositing, that's always even the trickier side because sometimes your would-be guest doesn't make the deposit right away and then you don't know if you're gonna block your calendar, you don't know if you're assured that this guest will in fact confirm. And you have to go through the trouble of checking your account. Did the guest deposit it already? Did he not? Am I gonna block the calendar? So these two things, having your calendar available and readily accepting payment, for me, makes Airbnb worthwhile in just assuring that you know you don't get double bookings, you don't get scammed, maybe you are given a fake deposit slip or whatsoever. I don't know, there are many things around this. So for me, working with a third-party platform, especially Airbnb, I think just the booking part and setting your calendar, accepting and crediting of payments already is a very convenient choice. So that's number one and two. Number three would be Airbnb's feature of air cover. So with air cover, hosts get some protection from guests in damaging their place. So in case a guest breaks your house rules, let's say he smoked when he's not supposed to smoke, or perhaps something is damaged at your place. Recently, one of the blinds in my place actually got damaged and broken by a guest. What you do in these instances is go to the resolution center under the air cover program. If anything is damaged or anything that has been broken in your house rules, you can actually complain the guest to Airbnb, file your complaint within 14 days or two weeks of the guest stay. Now, when you come across any problems upon guest checkout, make sure that you properly document whatever it is that's gone wrong. So I'm sharing here instances wherein the guest left cigarette butts. I'm also sharing here broken glasses from another guest. So what you do in these instances is that you properly document and properly file again within the first two weeks after the guest checks out. And if you are asking Airbnb for help, 
make sure that you also have a receipt or a quotation for the reported damage that you are telling Airbnb about. Usually, as long as you have these complete documentation in place, Airbnb would be happy to reimburse you, whether in part or in full. Of course, this isn't a perfect system. There are still instances wherein, unfortunately, Airbnb will find that your documents may not be enough. And maybe in some instances wherein you don't have enough proof, Airbnb will sometimes not rule in your favor. So I'm giving this just as a caveat, just as a heads up for you that even with air cover, it's not gonna be a perfect system that you're always gonna be benefiting from. Aww. So practice some due discretion also. Airbnb is doing this to really help us host, but we shouldn't do it so much that we abuse it. Make sure that we only do it for such instances wherein a guest really messed up our place. Because if we abuse the system and maybe there are times that there are hosts that would report bogus incidents, then you know, that's not gonna be good for all of us as well. So yes, even with this imperfect reimbursement system, I think the 15% that they get is worthwhile. I still think that Airbnb ultimately is a worthwhile business partner. I mean, you won't get as much exposure to random guests, people all over the world that wouldn't have known about your place if not for Airbnb. So again, this is not a paid advertisement. I do have my frustrations and apprehensions about Airbnb too. Um, maybe I'll share that in a future video. I don't think Airbnb is perfect. They have a lot of things that they could fix. But generally speaking, I think working with them is pretty much worthwhile. If you want to be an Airbnb host but don't have the time, you can click on this link or the link down below. We can look to partner up. I can help you manage your place. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy Airbnb hosting.